I know events like these, there's usually like two events happening simultaneously, but usually at the attendee event, there's at least something to do. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Swell Entertainment, and today we are talking about, where did I? Playlist Live, I'm so great at my job, oh my God. Advertises itself as the ultimate creator event of the year. Though I've never actually been to Playlist Live before this year, I have heard about it for years. And fun fact, not so fun fact, this was the last event that really happened prior to all events being canceled at the start of the pandemic. But first, let me tell you about a new partner of the channel, vidIQ. vidIQ is a tool that tons of YouTubers use to maintain and grow their YouTube channels. I've been using vidIQ for years, so when they reached out to me with this awesome opportunity for my viewers, I had to jump on it. vidIQ Boost gives you access to a ton of cool tools, including 50 video ideas for your channel a day. If you sign up through my link, you'll get the first 30 days of vidIQ Boost for just $1. Check out the link in the description box, and thank you again to vidIQ for partnering. I would love to say that I heard about Playlist Live being advertised, but I didn't. Not one time. Sometimes I have random thoughts pop into my head, like randomly, I don't remember what I was doing, but I randomly thought about my brother saying how VidCon is stupid and he would much rather go to Playlist Live. And if he was gonna go to any event, that's where he was going. And I thought, oh, I should see if they're doing Playlist Live this year, thinking it already passed, honestly, because I have heard nothing about it. Sure enough, it was two weeks away. On the website, it said tickets were gonna sell out as soon as they go on sale and I was able to get a pass, no problem. So I ended up getting an industry pass. This badge does not look any different than pretty much any other attendees badge. Not at all. I did like that my name was on it. I like that I was able to input small entertainment. I always think that's fun. I like these personalized little badges, even if it is just a slip of paper inside of a card holder, that's fine, I'll take it. Um, and then there's these symbols at the bottom. I wish I could tell you what they all mean, but I only finally got an answer to two of them. I thought this I, was uh, industry, no, um, this one's industry. This is influencer. And the rocket, I think means a meet and greet, but I don't know. They didn't tell me when I got my badge. Part of the problem, I think, for the overall vibe of the attendee side of things, not being able to distinguish, you know, attendees who were there to meet people and attendees that were there to make content or network in any capacity. Why did I get industry? Well, their website was very confusing. I was just like, that sounds right industry. I'm not going to get invited to be a featured creator because I was getting the sense that it was all TikTokers when I looked at their lineup of featured creators to the point that I recognized only five people that were on their featured creators sheet. Five of them. Two of them I don't even think ended up going. If they were there, I've seen nothing from them that they were there. The whole event was in the Orlando World Center Marriott, which is kind of just outside Walt Disney World area. The hotel is the hotel, and they take like the escalator down, and it brings you into the convention center of sorts. Now, a main issue I had <laughs> with this whole thing, there was no reason to allow the influencers, featured or not, to congregate in the lobby area or in the strip of the hallway outside of the influencer only area. There was no reason to let them do that because when you let them do that, then fans congregate in those areas and now we have a hazard. This is the reason that Tana was banned from VidCon, okay? <laughs> Fire hazards, causing crowding. It was not safe. It's not good. And it's also impolite to other guests who I spoke to a few of them and apparently hotel staff was like warning them that playlist was coming through. Unless you guys paid for that area, how are they not finding you? Causing a disturbance to other guests, but also to hotel operations. The lobby is the lobby and obviously they have other ways to get in and out of rooms and things like that, but it's also not safe. And the fact that you get, you had so much room, the convention center was so sparse and so spread out, frankly, that there was really no reason you couldn't be like, hey guys, you gotta go down there. Get down there. Oh, here's some clock, go! You know, like, <laughs> on one hand, it was fascinating to see because I try to go and just like absorb things when I'm in these events. I try to not disrupt things. I try to just get as much as I can. The amount of people who I'm like, I'm sure I've seen you once on TikTok or something. And they're like, just kind of like standing around seeing if anyone's like clocking who they are. And that happens at most of these events that was happening at VidCon as well, both in the Hyatt, which I've spoken about, and the VidCon Convention Center as well, as well as the creator space. So mostly at this event, I was just an attendee with an industry pass who also happened to be a mid-sized creator. I was not someone that they were trying to impress in any capacity, which I think worked out well, because then I got a very accurate view of the 
event itself from an attendee's perspective. Before I move forward, I wanna point this out. Predominantly this event was TikTokers. And then there were a few YouTubers who were like legacy invites who have been to every single playlist or who are still making money from doing YouTube or other things in social media, but they've previously been invited because they were YouTubers or they've completely shifted some regards and now they're just like, they make money off of TikTokers. I don't know. It was a lot of that. Um, it was a lot of 18 year olds and the people in their thirties. This event was not for me. I have TikTok. I use TikTok. I get a lot of content ideas from TikTok and the like, and I cover a lot of things on TikTok, but I am predominantly a YouTuber. And this was just predominantly TikTok, it seemed. So the first day is registration in the morning, starts early, and then you've got influencer industry and premium badges and also feature creators or whatever are allowed access into a couple of panels before the rest of attendees and general and weekender passes are given access around 4 p.m. before the kickoff show. I went to a good deal of those panels. I wonder if I can still pull up the schedule on the app. Something that it pissed me off about this whole event the schedule is not available on the website. You have to download the app. I get you want downloads. I just think that's annoying. So how to get a million views on videos. This is pretty much two YouTubers um, and then two TikTokers who also did YouTube, but predominantly YouTube shorts. It was actually interesting for me to see when I started talking about YouTube or bringing up or asking about YouTube, the assumption for the people who were speaking was YouTube shorts. It's just an interesting little change that I don't know if that's going to become the norm or not, but I just thought that that was very specific to this event because I've never had that happen before where they're just assuming that I'm talking about YouTube shorts. Two reasons made this entire weekend worth it for me. Hi, you're watching my video review of Playlist Live. I don't have to have a good time. I'm gonna make a video regardless, but also, Sean, Sean was basically head of VidCon. He was the main announcer type of person and he works for a big YouTuber. He requested that we didn't film him when he told us who, so I'm going to go ahead and not disclose who it was, but I'm sure that someone there else is probably gonna talk about it or something. It's not hard to figure it out. He was a very good moderator and he had a lot of very good insights. He's been in the industry for a lot of years. He's worked with a lot of brands. He's worked with a lot of creators. He was probably the best public speaker of everyone that was there and also had the most, in my opinion, usable information. Because for a lot of these TikTokers that were speaking, this is one of their first speaking engagements. This is a lot of the time, their first time on a panel. They're not public speakers and that's fine. That's something that can come with time. But as far as someone like me who, you know, makes content, working as a full-time content creator, I don't get anything from that, you know? And so again, this event's not for me <laughs> is what I'm trying to demonstrate. But Sean was, in my opinion, a very good moderator, very good at explaining points. If someone kind of gave a half answer to something, he would either press them on it and make them explain it better, or he would just kind of explain the gap of what they were saying. Something else that I thought was very telling about this whole event was how many of these TikTokers were very much, I don't even wanna say on, they were in character for a lot of it. And I've met a lot of different social media people now in the last year, essentially, who are not necessarily having a character, but they're on all the time. And you can kind of see when they kind of like mellow out a little bit. But then there are also people who very clearly have an online persona. And when they're out of that persona, it's very jarring. They're not like technically a different person, but it's like whiplash a little bit because you're like, oh, okay, the camera's not rolling right now. There was a lot of toxic positivity in my opinion, where I was like, I am very concerned for your mental health. Now, I'm not going to go and tell this to this 18 year old here who is smiling so bad, her cheeks keep hurting. I can see it when she drops it. I'm like, Ugh. I'm just concerned. The big sister in me was trying to come out this entire weekend. That's not my place. It's not my place to be over here like, what are we doing? What's what's the plan? You're gonna keep grinding? Okay, what about taxes? Let's talk about money. I see all the Yeezy slides that you've worn uh, four different pairs of this whole weekend. What's your savings look like? You know, like I, I know it's not my business, but as someone who has been terminally online for most of my life, I'm gonna be 25. I have seen people rise and fall. The people that I saw online at last playlist a lot of them are nowhere to be seen now. There were people in VidCon in 2019 who were not at VidCon 2022, and I know years have passed, but still they're not in the place they were. Finances change, especially with TikTok, where finances 
are a mess. And so I get concerned about longevity of these kids and they're so online and I just, oh God, it's not my place. It's not my place. It's not my place. I just, I get anxious for them. Sean was great during the uh, next panel, which was the uh, start making $100,000 outside of YouTube. I have not made $100,000 outside of YouTube, but I've come kind of close between Patreon, merch is like meh, and like a little bit of Instagram uh, money and all of that. It's not, God, how close is that to 100,000? I actually don't know how close that is. I should check. It's it's a couple of years uh, in there. I would say these talks that were in panel room A and panel room B, both on the first day and on the rest of the weekend, were definitely people who were desperate to learn more about content, who wanted to better themselves, who wanted to be full-time content creators, who believe they have the drive, or they had a passion for something that they wanted to get out there and they thought being an influencer or a content creator would help them be able to do that. Or something else that I thought was very telling, because I've never seen this before, a lot of parents, parents whose kids were models, influencers in the making. There was one set of parents there that were there because their kid is almost at 10,000 and they don't understand it at all. And they were trying to understand how best to help him, how to keep him safe. Thought that was very cool. I have not seen that. I'm sure that's happened at other events like this before, but I just, I personally have not experienced that. I've never seen this amount of parents who were like desperate to understand what their kids were getting involved in, in this regard versus just being like, no, get off the social media. They were really trying to be supportive and understand so they could best help their child. One point, Sean, and said, okay, what is your first recommendation of how to get started? And everyone would start saying things like, you know, just consistency, be on that grind, be yourself. And he'd be like, okay, no, we're gonna do this again. And be like, well, you just got a phone. What do you do now? And then they would do the same thing and it all would talk about consistency. He said, okay, now we're gonna go again and I'm gonna stop you. And I'm gonna ask you a deeper question about what you're saying, because we're gonna get to the bottom of this because he wasn't happy with the surface level answers essentially that he was getting from people. So he went to someone whose name is not on here for the uh, uh, website, but I was very confused because apparently this guy makes money live streaming on Meet Me. Did you guys know the dating apps are now live stream platforms? I felt so out of touch this weekend. So there was this Live Nation thing happening. This was a whole subset of like the people that were like the social media platforms behind Playlist. Meet Me, plenty of fish. That's a dating website. Tagged, never heard of that. World Star, heard of that. Zeus, eh. Moco, never heard. BLK, Kick. I have friends who were groomed on there. I didn't know it was live streaming now. And then Scout, never heard of that before. But one of the panelists was a live streamer on Meet Me and he had a large crowd that were there for him. They were like screaming and yelling and so excited to see him. There were some moderators who were just dropping the ball. Not in that they were bad moderators, but that this was just clearly like, they've never done this before, which is fine. I get it. But like, I don't know, does no one practice? No one like get the questions beforehand and be like, hey, let's talk about some things. You know, I don't know, maybe at least meet the panelists beforehand. Saturday, Sean was doing a Secrets Exposed solo uh, panel. He did something that I thought was nice where he sat on the edge of the stage and did almost like a round table type of discussion with everyone that was there. Took questions and just kind of discussed things one-on-one. -on -one. Like I said, a lot of parents were there, a lot of people who have been trying to do content for a while. I actually spoke a bit in this panel like talking about why I was there because I was speaking and talking about things at the end. People were like coming up and asking me questions because they acknowledged like, oh, she knows a little bit about what she's talking about. Pretty much most of the attendees that I spoke to were like, I already met so-and-so, here's who I'm meeting, who are you here to meet? And then if they happen to also become uh, influencers out of this, cool. But it was pretty secondary for a good chunk of the people that I spoke with. In the panel rooms, different story. The panel rooms were a lot of people who were just really wanting to learn. Unless there were, you know, panels with like actual like big people on them. It's funny because so many people, when I was covering this on like Twitter and Instagram and all of that, were being like, is it cringe to see people running around doing dancing videos and all of that? And it's interesting because I have existed on the internet long enough and I've been to enough of these events, not just social media events, but events in general, that it's fascinating to see how cringe evolves in these uh, spaces and seeing how they change. When I went to the UFO convention, February of 2020, people thought it was cringe to think that COVID was not related to aliens or that if you didn't believe whatsoever, that you didn't believe that there was something out there, that was cringe. Cringe that I had a camera with me. Uh, someone straight up put up a no filming sign, so I stopped taking video while I was there. At VidCon, 
Cringe is kind of relative. It depends. Considering a lot of VidCon, it's like who can be the loudest in the room in the influencer spots, who can get attention, but also no fangirling. Playlist, dancing videos, not weird. Running up to someone being like, oh my God, I love you. Hugs are very common. Um, no masks, no, no COVID. <laughs> I've heard nothing about it being a super spreader event, but I don't know, I'm concerned. There was only one instance that like I saw twice where the dancing was considered weird. And that was when you couldn't see where the phone was. And I would hear people talking about like, are they just dancing? Like that was weird to them that they would be dancing for fun or to learn a dance or to practice so that they could film. It was weird to not document yourself doing the dancing for just the enjoyment of it. Even though in this space, a lot of these people are dancers. A lot of these people are models. TikTok in general is very quick cut trend meme focused. But even then, if it's like you're not documenting yourself doing something that was considered cringe. Though I kept getting the emails for picking my meet and greets, it never let me actually pick my meet and greets. It kept rerouting me back to the main page your website needs some work, I'm just saying. And so I was like, you know what, whatever. I'll figure it out later. I'll, maybe I'll see if I can squeeze into one. And I ended up picking, ended up being on Sunday and I picked it because like I said, I recognize mostly no one on the lineup. And so I recognize mostly no one in the meet and greets. And the people that I did recognize were already filled up or not available because they're like the big popular people or whatever. So there were two people that I recognized who still had openings and I was like, oh, that'll be funny. Anyways, it was Axel Weber who I've talked about in a video before and uh, Sebastian Bales, who is just like a guy who I've seen a lot of, who I, I used to always plan on making a video on and I just never ended up doing it. I went to the meet and greet with like, okay, I need to be able to review the meet and greet process. I did like that though I didn't have a meet and greet picked. Once I got my badges, they said, hey, you go over there. And I was like, hi, do I need to be over here? And they're like, oh no, you have no meet and greets. You gotta go over there and pick your meet and greets. And they had a whole separate booth set up for me to go and pick my meet and greets, which I liked. Cause then that way everyone gets at least somewhat of what their badge is worth. And then hopefully there's less people with no one showing up. They also, from my understanding, unless you were a tippy tippy top person, tippy 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 top, you were in fact given a group meet and greet, unless you were part of a group. Part of a group, obviously the entire group is in one meet and greet. So I was in meet and greet 28. And like I said, it was Axel Weber, Sebastian Bales, and then Nicholas and Emiliano Maya Tapia and the Splash Twins. They said no TikToks while in line. They didn't say anything about a selfie video though. So if you do see the video on TikTok, no, you didn't. Oh, they also said no calls to anyone who's not here because that's not fair. And then they didn't enforce that whatsoever. If you're gonna give rules, at least enforce them. You know, take someone's phone away. I wanna see how that would have gone. Met Nicholas and Emiliano first and I just straight up told them, hey, I'm gonna be honest. I'm here to review the event. I don't know who you are. Everyone gave me a hug first, which I think almost makes it more awkward when I then say, I don't know who you are. I was like, are you guys enjoying the event? And they kind of, they, everyone was very nice and gave me uh, a little snippet and we're like, okay, and this is a selfie. And they were like, okay, hi, you know, Splash Twins were cool. Talked to Sebastian for a minute, very quick chat. I was like, are you enjoying the event? Yeah, this is cool to meet people, all of that. And then I talked to Axel. So I have actually not heard anything from Axel until recently I saw that he was doing uh, a musical. And I was like, I skipped several chapters. I saw him a couple of times at Playlist. And I will say this guy, if he's playing a character, he plays it well. He's on pretty much the entire time, very charismatic. He's making everyone laugh. He's making everyone feel comfortable. Even the security guards were having a good time with him. I was like, oh yeah, he's funny, right? To the security guard, because he was like walking away from Axel laughing. And he was like, yeah, they always tell us to put whoever talks the most at the end. And that guy gets you talking. I got to Axel, did the hug thing. He was wearing a brown suit, which looked nice. But then I noticed because I'm a psychopath, that at the end of the tail um, on his jacket, he left the stitch in. So I was like, you're supposed to cut that thing. And I let him know that. And he was like, I kind of like it though. Also, I've made a video on you. <laughs> I should explain, I've never done a meet and greet like this before where I've never actually gone to a meet and greet like this. Not once. I don't think I'm built for this. I'm too awkward. It's really weird. Cause I'm assuming that if I was just like, I'm in love with you to any of these people, like you're my, I'm your biggest fan. That would be less awkward than me being like, so <laughs> I don't know who you are. Like I wanted to die. I'm reviewing the event. I have no idea who you guys are. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest. I'm a YouTuber. I'm reviewing the event. I've never heard of you guys before this weekend. I'm gonna be honest. I'm a YouTuber. I'm reviewing the event. Okay. The other thing is that I actually am reviewing the event. I was wearing a tracker the entire time, 
And I'm sure my heartbeat like kicked up because I was like, this sucks. I'm so, this is the most uncomfortable I've ever been. But he took it very well. And I just explained how I made a video about how his fans reacted when Juilliard, when he was rejected from Juilliard. And I asked him about like, you know, how it might affect your career and all of that. And he was like, you know, the people, I think what happened is that whoever, I, I have the clip, I'll just show you the clip. The only thing that happened was the social media manager of the Juilliard Instagram page had a, a hell of a day scrolling through comments. Okay. But it was over just as fast as it started okay. and the only thing that continued was my trying to be in the entertainment business okay. and the, even the people that were freaking out they don't really care anymore things yeah. happen so fast and so quick yeah. that something seems large in the moment mm -hmm. you know it gets put in papers or it gets publicized online mm -hmm. but very quickly mm -hmm. the same people that were in uproar are mm -hmm. on to the next thing okay. so I think it's just it's super important even when something seems massive in the moment to remember mm -hmm. that very soon Everyone, including yourself, will be on to the next thing. I'm sorry, it's in portrait mode. I was trying to make it seem like I was taking a selfie, like, a, you know, so sorry. All in all, fairly nice guy, seemingly having a good time. Seemed to connect with literally every person that was in front of me talking with him. So, I mean, there are people who you meet and you just kind of know they're gonna go and do something. I did ask him if he's an industry plan. Of course I asked him if he's an industry plan, because why not? And what about the claims that you were an industry plan? I honestly, I take most of those as like a compliment. Like okay. I like I did everything so fast that people were like, no way he did it on his own. Okay. So, okay. which is cool. I, won't and I, think, I think the only way to do things fast is to take risks. Okay, can That's you it. say shout out Swell Entertainment really quick? Shout out Swell Entertainment. Thank okay. you, that was the most fun thing I've done actually. All in all, everyone that I met at the meet and greet was very nice. Aside from the meet and greets and the few panels I went to, there was mostly nothing to do unless you were obsessed with some creators. Nothing really interesting is happening. Everyone's just kind of milling around and there's no one that I like want to meet. There was two stages that I frankly think were far too close together and were also too close to the main stage. Considering how much space they had, they should have moved the stage uh, away from each other. There was one stage that uh, you could sign up to sing at, I believe. And then there was another one that had scheduled performances with various people. Problem is, is these were both facing each other. So their speakers were both facing each other. It was just like a cyclone of sound that sucked sucked so much, not that they were bad, it just was un, no, no bueno, not fun. The expo hall, very minimal. There was about a total of 17 booths. That's not counting the merch stand itself. I always think it's funny when I go to events like these and I meet a company that's like, yeah, hey, we're helping you get brand deals. And it's predominantly for people who have never done a brand deal before or people who are just getting started, which is great, those need to exist. However, then I start asking questions and they get annoyed because I'm not like saying, yes, give me 50 bucks for an Instagram post. I've done a paid Instagram post before. It was way more than $50, I will tell you that. So when I say this is my rate, and then they're like, oh, well, we have set rates on this and all this stuff. Obviously that's done. <laughs> I'm just walking away. And then I'm considered a bitch <laughs> and that's fine because sometimes you gotta be one. I don't think I'm wrong to ask some questions when you're trying to get people's financial information, whether you're giving them money or not in exchange, you're getting their access to their data and shit. I don't know. I think you should be able to ask questions. And then what I thought was interesting was that the only brand that I considered to be notable, that sounds bad, but an established brand in the creator space that wasn't uh, also a brand that's like established in Orlando or local to Florida, essentially, was a Black Magic Editor, okay? They were at VidCon. I spoke with one of their reps, got their contact information. <laughs> the expo hall also doubled as the main stage, which isn't uncommon. That's kind of what happens at VidCon. There was a lot of sponsors at this event. The main sponsor, AKT. They're literally on the lanyards. No idea where they were in the expo hall or in the event itself. Glimpse NFT. There was one point in the registration hall where it said, turn yourself into an NFT. I don't know if that's what this was. Never saw that booth set up again. Not one time. Also, they already have an NFT thing set up. I will not be turning myself into an NFT. I took a photo of their sponsor, Board. I'm gonna put it on the screen right here and show you all of the brands that were only in the featured creator influencer lounges only. Listen, I get how these things work. Usually you put a lot of money forward and you start looking at, you know, what do I wanna sponsor? Do I wanna sponsor the lanyards? Do I wanna sponsor an event? Do I wanna sponsor a party? Do I wanna just only have access to influencers? I'm sure that's a lot of what's going on. However, do you not want money? Do you not want brand awareness? because this is shit brand awareness. It just is. There's multiple companies here who would have benefited from having a booth in the expo area 
or in the entire hallway area that was just basically vacant the entire weekend. Didn't need to be the entire time. You could have had a booth there for one day. And obviously this happened as well at VidCon. I talked about being at the Hyatt and what I got out of the creator lounges and the networking space. A lot of those brands also did still have some form of existence at VidCon, whether it was in the community expo hall or on the creator only floor in the creator space in one of the other buildings. They had some form of an existence there. So they got access to various people other than the tippy tippy top people because the tippy tippy top people like free things and get free things from these. Like for example, they were giving out uh, Heelys at one point. So by day two, all of these influencers are s healing around, skating around the expo hall, which is fine. That's funny. But then also, do you realize how much money you missed out on that entire weekend? Have them wearing their shoes, okay? And then you set up a spot to sell Heelys in the actual event space. Do you know how many people would have been like, oh my God, I want our Heelys like so-and-so. Which, which Heelys did so-and-so get? Do you have those shoes in my size? And then you just have all of these people healing around. Would it have been a hazard? Yes, but we already have crowding going on upstairs. What's a few twisted angles? I get having the separate spaces for creators because you wanna make it worth their time to come. It's one thing to have a space that's separate for creators. These events often have two events happening. The events that's happening for attendees and the event that's happening for the content creators that are featured and the invited guests and all of that. Lots of families at these things, because again, a lot of these people are underage or to some degree have never traveled alone before. So there's a lot of family members. At the very least, you need more things to do. A lot of people were just walking around aimlessly because they were bored out of their mind. Oh, the Oasis Lounge. There was nothing in there. I don't know what was exclusive about it other than the fact that no one used it. So when I was in there, I was a VIP. That was really it. It was kind of like in 2019 VidCon when the Creator Lounge had no sponsor. And so it was just dark with seating. That's what it was here, except it was well lit and freezing because of AC in Florida. Side note, every single video clip you're gonna see of me, I'm probably wearing a cardigan. I am part turtle and I was always cold with this AC. And then I would walk outside and wanna die from Florida humidity. Florida and I do not get along. The food trucks outside, I felt like they were pretty minimal, but at food trucks, I mean, you're kind of locked into what's available in the area. Unless you were in these talks and then, you know, sticking around and grabbing people's attention after the talks, networking was a little more difficult. A lot of business cards that I got from this trip, uh, and that was kind of like, I would say the definitive line between people. If you would like a business card for your content or things like that, then I would know that like, okay, you're here as a content creator. And there were content creators there. I don't wanna make it seem like everyone was there to just meet people. And there were creators there who were there also to meet people, to ask them questions about content creation, which I mean, hey, that's the best way I think to utilize a meet and greet if you really wanna go through it that way. I did not get enough out of it, in my opinion, to justify going again in the future and the expense of the travel alone, even though even the industry pass is a chunk of money, but it could be worse. VidCon's uh, industry pass, I think is like $900. It's, it's a chunk of money. This is more reasonable ticket wise, but the travel is the problem for me. So on the first day to kill some time, I didn't want to leave the area, but I decided mm, I don't want to keep walking in circles. So I'm going to sit down and I decided I was going to do an Instagram live stream. Okay. I, the last one I did was at Ace Fest and people liked that I was doing a live stream from an event and like checking in and answering questions while I was there. A couple of people started coming up looking at me and then walking away. And I was sitting alone wearing a black tank top, uh, like ruffly shirt with my badge lanyards. And again, everyone is wearing these lanyards. A couple of people said that it was because of the lanyard. Every single person was wearing the same lanyard. The only people who were wearing a different lanyard were featured creators, that's all. But uh, people thought I worked there. Can I try and start helping people? Hi. That is a very good question, because I also would like free Celsius. The problem is, is that I am also a, an attendee. Someone on a Segway definitely knows something. Is it the glasses? Um, yes, actually inside these panel rooms, there are waters. Oh. People that actually worked at Playlist, the security guards were wearing red shirts, aside from their uh, the higher up security guards, they were wearing the, uh, the black shirts. And then people who worked playlist, but we're not like planning playlists. We're wearing bright blue shirts. And then the actual planners, people involved with organizing the event, were wearing black shirts that said playlist live on them. They were not wearing lanyards. They were pretty much all just had walkie talkies and stuff on them. So I don't know, I guess the question is, should I send playlist live an invoice for my unpaid labor? So it's kind of like what my conclusion was with, with VidCon in its current form is not worth it for me as a mid-sized content creator with where I'm at now. To some places it is the creator space, worth it, I think, at VidCon. Uh, but the expo hall itself, unless you're there to desperately see someone that you are a fan of, I don't think it's worth it. 
I have people that I admire, but there's no one that I right now want to sell my left arm for to meet. I'm not the screaming type of person that's going to go and run up and be like, oh my God, I love you. I need photos with you. I just, I, I, I'm not that type of person. Maybe when I was a teenager, but not now. You know, I pay taxes. I have a son. Before anyone gets weird, I'm talking about Hermes, okay? In its current form, I would not go again. However, when I say in its current form, I am told that next year is gonna be different. During the Secrets Exposed or Secrets Revealed segment with Sean, I straight up said, you know, I, I don't think this is for me. I'm really not getting that much from the panels. So I explained to Sean, like, you know, I got more out of you being a moderator than I did out of these panelists. Next year is gonna be different. It's not gonna be open for buying a ticket. It's not gonna be open to the public. You'll have to apply to come. It's gonna be creators only. I want it to be more like this, where it's more like round tables, smaller panels, one-on-one, -on -one, getting the questions answered that you wanna know so you can better yourself and all this stuff. Go on to Playlist Live and you look at 2023, you have to apply to be considered to potentially be able to buy a ticket. And it looks like based on how much information you have to give about yourself and why you wanna go and all this stuff, that you will either be potentially filtered into different categories. So there's gonna be like actually attendee categories where they're still gonna have meet and greets and all of that. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this all plays out. I have to go now, you've tricked me. That's the gag. The gag of it all is I have no choice but to go now because I need to see how different it is. I need to see if you would put where you would categorize me as someone with 300K if I applied right now. I need to see what the tickets are gonna cost for me to go. I'm gonna see if they need to give me a room discount because I've got some clout. You know, I need to see how this is gonna play out now. This, you tricked me. You tricked me, Playlist Live. You already got me to work for free and now you're gonna get me to go again even though I don't really wanna go again. It's work. I don't have to have a good time. It's a job for me. This is fine. You know, I get content regardless. Hello, you get a video. There's a high likelihood that if this video does well, I'll make the money back that I spent on the weekend. You know, like it's it's the brand deal I did the other day is gonna pay for this trip, you know, that type of thing. This is a genre of content that I do, it's fine. And I got a couple of other video ideas from just going there and being in this experience. I also got an idea for a uh, zombie apocalypse uh, situation based around this event, the uh, the separation of like plebs and clout. Fascinating. And so it gave me a sci-fi novel idea. <laughs> like if the zombie apocalypse broke out today and we were not allowed to leave the hotel, how would that go? And I just got so many ideas. I literally started doing an outline on the plane back. Would I go again? Again, no, not in the current state, not as a mid-sized creator. If you really wanna meet creators, yes, absolutely. This is the event for you. If you want to meet TikTokers specifically, I don't even think there were any people who were specifically Twitch streamers at this event that I could find. I've never heard of Meet Me live streamers. I've never heard of Plenty of Fish live streamers, but apparently that is a big genre of content that was very prevalent at Playlist Live. Oh, TikTokers who had a bad time at VidCon with their meet and greets, this is the event for you. This is the event for you, Playlist Live. That That's where you got to go. Okay, I will say, as far as the general attendee age and like, person goes. VidCon was predominantly, I would say, younger, kind of mixed, I would say, between male and female, specifically young girls and boys, okay? Teenagers, young boys and girls and all of that. Um, but honestly, probably a little more guys, specifically. Way more young girls, uh, way more teen girls. Any TikTokers who were there are watching this. I'm sure you're not happy with what I'm saying, and that's okay. You don't have to like me. I'm sure you probably thought I was someone chaperone walking around in my little cardigan and sneakers. If you clocked me at all, I'm learning that I'm kind of invisible at these events. I don't know if it's the glasses. I don't know if it's the fact that I'm not dressed trendy or whatever, who knows? If you take anything away from what I'm saying, I really hope you take away from the fact that me saying that the people that I saw at the last event are not at this event currently for the most part, or at least not in the event in the same capacity that they were. The people who were popular a year ago, unless they were popular popular, are not in the same vein now. Please acknowledge where you are now and save accordingly, plan accordingly. The amount of people who were asked uh, what's going on next and they said, I'm just gonna keep making videos and grinding, concerning to me. As someone who has been on the internet for so long, and you may think you're different and that's fine. That's great. You should think you're different. You should think that I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out a way to make this last. I'm gonna make this my life. I'm gonna do this. Great, but please plan accordingly. Again, I'm being a big sister. I'm being annoying, I know, I know. You don't wanna hear this. You wanna hear that you're amazing and you're great and this is gonna be, you're always gonna be 20 for the rest of your life, okay? And that's just, 
I, I'm telling you this as someone who's almost 25. It's, no. A pandemic's gonna happen and suddenly your life's all over the place, okay? Save money. Have an accountant. Don't blow all your money on a nice fast car. Even in the money talks that I saw, they were very, they were very specific about working with brands and making money from brands and all this stuff. Very few people were acknowledging about how inconsistent that money is. I have more followers this year than I did last year. My sponsorships are very different than they were last year. I have made far less money from sponsorships this year. I still have a couple months to go. Could still catch up, but I probably won't because it's just unlikely. Sponsorships are not guaranteed. View numbers are not guaranteed. AdSense, Creator Fund, Reels Fund, none of that is guaranteed. You may think you have a formula down. It's not guaranteed. This money is so incredibly inconsistent and it's only gonna get worse, especially if the economy keeps doing whatever the fuck it's doing. These things change and fluctuate. And I just want everyone to be aware of that because that was not happening. How many of these people have accountants? How many of them know what taxes are? I know you all have parents, but still. Side note, uh, Tana was there, Tana Mojo. Anyways, the event that we are connected through, TanaCon, may be happening again. Went on TikTok and said that she was given an offer to do TanaCon again, right? And should she do it? She wasn't sure. Shane Dawson commented to uh, basically do like a veterans discount for everyone who went last time. Um, and then that she was like, well, now this is like legitimizing it. I should do it, right? 2019, a year after TanaCon, I put out my TanaCon one year later video. I interviewed people who were involved with TanaCon. I interviewed Elixir who uh, broke in. I interviewed the uh, older sister of the two girls who were actually in Shane's documentary about TanaCon. And I interviewed Margot, who was on uh, Jen and Julian's podcast about it. I interviewed my friend Lissa, who uh, you guys know for the, her birdhouse video, okay? But one of the people I interviewed actually lived in Orlando and went to Playlist Live after TanaCon a few months later. And while she was there, she was talking to some event staff. They told her, the event staff, that they were actually in talks with Tana to do TanaCon again, but with like Playlist Live's involvement. 2019, when I talked to her about that. Now it's 2022. Could this be an ongoing thing that Playlist Live is offering Tana? Potentially, who knows? We'll see if it actually happens. Tana's stock is doing fairly good right now in the grand scheme of things compared to like everyone else compared to where it's been before. So they may actually go through with this, who knows? But my understanding is that it's an offer that's been made to Tana before. And I believe currently Michael Weist still in fact owns the TanaCon copyright. That being said, if it does happen, obviously I will go so you don't have to. And that's really gonna be it for this video. Have you ever heard of Playlist Live? Have you been to Playlist Live? Do you also think I should be compensated for the work that I did while at Playlist Live? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, The Social Manions Podcast. Reminder that I have merch like that mug back there and new designs coming soon. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like to find my Patreon, I'll be listed down below. If you'd like to find me on my social media, it'll be all up here and that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day, goodbye. I will say, considering my job is literally to like be online and be in the know, I felt very out of touch at this event <laughs> with how few of the lineup I actually recognize. Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crash PC, China, David, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Era, Ayal, Hopeless, Incognito, Jack Ray, James, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen Lamb, Lexi, Louise, Matt, Matt O, Matthew S, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Cutie, Randy, Wendy, William, Zendry, Zwink.